Our call to worship, give us, O Lord, a vision of your kingdom that we may truly see and believe. As we worship you today, give us, O God, the ability not just to hear your word, but to understand what it means for us in these challenging times. Help us to worship you together in our homes and in our daily lives, living out this time of isolation and change. Creator God, we thank you today for all the gifts that you have given us. The gift of sight and hearing, smell and touch and taste. For too long we have not celebrated as we should have the sound of children playing, standing in a queue and striking up a conversation with a stranger, seems so ordinary. And now we long for the opportunity. A simple meal shared at Cafe Maz now feels like a distant privilege. We come before you now, sorry that we lost focus on all the gifts that you have given us, that we did not have eyes to see them. We thank you for the best gift of all, for Jesus, who lived among us and showed us how life could be. Today, sitting at home, we give you thanks that we are able to worship together, even if we are separated. I invite you to say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Lord, be all else to me, save that thou art. reading 1 Samuel 16 verses 1 to 13. Samuel anoints David. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. The Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, do you come in peace? Samuel replied, yes, in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance but the Lord looks at the heart. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel said to him, the Lord has not chosen these. 
So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and had him brought in. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Ramah. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us this morning. We don't have a notes and news, but all of our notices and announcements have been sent by email, or if you're receiving this as a CD, you will be, they will be on a little piece of paper within your CD. We will be open for private prayer on Mondays between 11 and 2 in the afternoon, so 11 in the morning and 2 in the afternoon and on a Thursday evening from seven till nine, and we will be open for private prayer during that time. We would like to wish all the ladies in our church a very happy Mothering Sunday. We would like to wish this to you all and send lots of love on this very special day. Birthdays for the week. We have one birthday. Joseph has a birthday on Tuesday this week, so we wish you a very happy birthday. Our second reading is taken from John's Gospel, chapter 9, verses 1 to 12. And I'd like to invite you at home after the service to read through to verse 41. But for now, 1 to 12. As he went along, he saw a blind man from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this Man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am the world, I am the light of the world. After this, he spat on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others said, no, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then? Were your eyes opened, they asked. He replied, The man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and I washed, and then I could see. Where is this man? They asked him. I don't know, he said. Thanks be to God for the reading of God's word. Are you afraid to cough in public at the moment? Do you feel judged when you just simply need to clear your throat and you notice that people are doing a wide berth around you? This seems to be what life has come to. Last Sunday, we were talking about being anxious to even sniff. People were sharing stories of people being made to feel unclean and shunned purely because they were blowing their nose. Things are taking a bit of a weird turn with all of the craziness around the world at the moment. Toilet rolls seem to be causing the most lively discussions. There are even YouTube clips of people fighting in shops for that last pack. 
It has become so extreme that we've heard that one person was seen taking a pack of toilet rolls out of a blind man's trolley. I have to say, I never thought that I would see eggs in quite this way. I now think very carefully before cracking an egg. It needs to be for something really special because I have not seen an egg in the shops for over two weeks. This month, we have been exploring the holy habit of worship. And when we started it three weeks ago, could any of us have imagined that all of our traditional ways of worship would now have been challenged because we are not even able to gather together this morning in our building where we normally worship. I am standing at the moment in an empty church with all of the congregation at home, most of whom are in isolation. We are certainly living in unprecedented times. Not only is this form of worship new to us, but in the coming weeks, it will be that there will be new forms of worship throughout the world, in every country. This certainly is a first. We are in a period of this pandemic when we have been told to keep our physical distance from people, to make sure that our hands are cleaned at all times, the health professionals emphasize not touching our faces. We are learning lovely ways to time our hand washing procedure, which are sweeping across the world, from new rhymes to singing happy birthday, not once, but twice. Therefore, our gospel reading in John this morning takes almost on a comical, dramatic scene in the light of our global shutdown. Jesus heals the blind man by spitting in some mud, taking the saliva-ridden mixture, touching the man's face and placing it on his eyes, and then asking him to go down to the river to wash. It was almost a com communal bath of sorts, a WHO health professional's nightmare. If Jesus had to do that today, I think he would probably receive a fine for putting a vulnerable person at risk. So I absolutely love the fact that this is the lection we're reading for today because of the ironies. So can this reading offer up some help and insight into our current climate of this global pandemic and our climate disruption crisis? This blind man is on the margins of society because he is poor. He only had the fruits of his begging to live on and he was shunned by society and the religious community because of the mistaken belief that his disability was the result of sin. He was looked down on at best, excluded from society as people shied away from him and felt that he was unclean at worst. But something wonderful happens to him. He meets Jesus. Jesus puts this muddy concoction on his eyes and sends him down to the river to wash. And the man receives his sight. He sees for the first time since he was born. What an incredible moment that must have been for him. Everything was new and bright and unusual. Seeing things for the first time that he had only heard about. People's faces, trees, Water, the soil, everything was a revelation. His eyes were opened to the world. Are perhaps our eyes opening at the moment? In this time of our global history, when we are singing to our neighbors from balconies, singing in choirs 500 strong on our computers, when we are meeting our neighbors for the first time, families are getting to spend real quality time together reading books and playing games and chatting over a cup of tea. Our eyes are beginning to see the world in a different way again. Priorities are shifting, and what is truly is important is coming into clear focus. The blind man was in a state of seeing for the first time and marveling at the world. However, he is almost immediately pounced on by the Pharisees. 
They want to know what has happened, what has changed, who did this. They are uncomfortable with the fact that life was not business as usual. Something is different, and what they see with their own eyes did not fit into their worldview, their understanding. This Jesus, who was doing things so radically different, was someone to fear, and they were trying to discredit him. They wanted things to be the way they had always been, and they did not want things to change. Things have changed, and they have changed in a mere matter of months. Things are different. There is no business as usual. Every day we are charting new waters globally. We do not want to minimize the trauma that this disease has brought to many communities and countries and families. And yet, in spite of the struggles, there are gifts that are emerging. People are realizing they are interdependent. They need each other. We need to share our resources, our research, share our experience of the pandemic in order to help one another. Our daily lives are so disrupted, and yet beautiful new relationships are blossoming as a result of this disruption. The whole of society is now relying on cleaners and nurses and shelf packers and truckers. These people who were just weeks ago dismissed as unskilled labor. Our vision is changing. We are finding new ways to share with one another. I'm standing in the church today, but next week I will be leading worship in my home. We are connecting with one another on our WhatsApp prayer group, and every night at nine o'clock, we are praying together in our homes, but with one another. Mothering Sunday today in 2020 will probably live in the hearts and minds of people for many years to come. Mothers isolated from their children in some cases, Mothers getting to spend more time with their children than they probably have in years. No meals out, but rather, and hopefully, precious home-cooked meals to spend time chatting over. Perhaps no fancy gifts, because there's nothing left in the shops, folks, to buy. But rather, handcrafted cards and homemade gifts to share this Mothering Sunday. Is it not time? to see each other for the gifts that we are to one another. We are hearing and seeing story after story of people coming out of this madness to reach out to each other. God chose David to be king and not his brothers. He chose him because he saw what was in his heart. We have an opportunity to see what is in people's hearts right now people connecting in new ways across the world. Those borders that business as usual seem to spend a lot of time enforcing are slipping away in the face of connections through the internet. Our physical borders may be closed for health reasons, but our hearts, they seem to be opening. This is an opportunity to worship and to love God with all of our hearts, with all of our souls, with all of our minds, and to truly love our neighbors as ourselves. Something wonderful is happening. A world so divided and angry is coming together in our adversity and birthing something new and different, something that is not business as usual. The Pharisees were threatened by this new thing, and we too must expect those who have the most to lose to be uncomfortable with the solidarity that is emerging. Our economics are often at odds with us caring for people, and now we are entering a new way where governments are being called to show real, practical care for the vulnerable and to support them financially. These are our zero-hour contract workers. 
our self-employed peoples whose jobs afford them little respite from the grind of bills and mortgages. Our government was faced with a decision whether to prioritise economics or human life, and eventually they chose human life. Others have followed suit with businesses allowing workers to work from home, global sports and activities closing in order to save lives. Talking of saving lives, one of the benefits we are seeing is that our planet is beginning to take a deep, long breath and its healing has begun. Rivers are clearing, skies are less polluted. I hope we have the eyes to see that through adversity our faith can grow stronger. The blind man is healed by Jesus, but Jesus was not at the river when his sight was restored. When he met Jesus again, his faith had grown through the interrogation of the Pharisees and his parents distancing themselves from him. Think of the children that are standing up for the planet, whose parents and grandparents and even political leaders who can't see the new thing that they are doing. And the faith of these children in what they believe and what they see is growing stronger and stronger like the healed man who faced adversity. Their courage and their conviction will help save this planet. So, this crisis moment invites us to stop and to see things anew again. We are seeing human life as precious and we are valuing the gift of an egg that is not to be taken for granted. We are seeing the hearts of one another across cultures, languages, colours and privilege. Things have changed. And when we walk in the way of the one who opened our eyes, we will never turn back to business as usual. Amen. pray together. Dear God, we grieve with all who are lonely, those who miss friendly visits, safe social spaces, lunch clubs, which are such a lifeline to so many. We pray for all who are in care homes isolated and afraid for the future. We grieve with one another when our mental health feels fragile and the very contact that would help is prohibited. We stand with everyone who needs their benefits during this uncertain and economically unstable time. We pray for all our church and community groups that have stopped meeting, for all their members who will miss the companionship and support. Help us, God, as we seek to find new ways to connect and stay in touch with each other. We pray for all who are in hospital at the moment for children in the ICU needing your healing touch, for their anxious parents who need your strength. We pray for children and young people who have had their exams and school cancelled and face uncertainty for the future. We pray for all the millions of people around the world who have had their livelihoods threatened by the fast changes around us industries reliant on tourism that has ceased, musicians, actors, and sportsmen and women who enrich our lives but who cannot cope without incomes. We pray with those whose wedding plans are in tatters. We grieve with those whose bereavement is surely enough to bear without having difficult decisions about funeral gatherings. We grieve for those who have died because of the coronavirus, those infected who are isolated 
and feeling unwell, and for those that are caring day and night, for those in hospital around the world, for nurses, cleaners, kitchen staff, doctors, laboratory workers, all trying to contain and manage this pandemic. As we do so, God, deepen our respect and our empathy for people for whom isolation, poor sanitation, lack of safe space to play, or economic deprivation have been the norm forever. God, we ask you to work on our hearts to refocus our priorities as a church and as a nation. Match resistance to disease with openness to each other. In the hurt of enforced isolation, in the longing for freedom to interact, in the ache of imposed solitude. Refresh our confidence that every human being is your precious child. Help us to see the brothers and sisters that you have given us to care for. Amen. Our sending out prayer. Lord, help us to learn how to see and how to believe and help us to put what we see and believe into practice today and tomorrow and for the rest of our lives. Amen. Join me in your home saying the grace together. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Amen.